I'm just really excited because this is the week we've really been waiting for. Friday, we get the results. 10 days compliance. It's over a dollar. All right, we've got news that's going to break out this Friday for sure. We're in a blackout period. We're going to have to be patient a little bit longer. We've seen some positive momentum in this price since a week ago. That was your buying opportunity, right? We're going to take a look at the charts. NASDAQ falls for the third straight day as chip stocks weigh on the market. There's always something that's going to pull the markets down after they rally. We're seeing these rallies in the market get a little bit shorter each time, but after a rally, you see a sharp sell-off. Typically, I just don't think that things this, this coming up year, the second half of this year, they're just going to keep running like last year. We don't have everything stimulating the economy. The Fed's against us. We've got higher interest rates. We still have supply chain issues, and we have a global disconnected economy, right? I mean, it's not as whole as it was before when Russia was part of the whole picture and the issues with China and Taiwan and who knows what will pop up next with energy crisis and so on and so forth. I mean, anything could come up next. That's not the scary. It's just to manage expectations. Bitcoin hit that peak level. I like to watch where this is at. And Michael Sayers said that he had a $30,000 cost average, the largest company, and he stepped down from his position just to focus on Bitcoin. This has me concerned not only to know that they borrowed money to buy Bitcoin and that their cost average is so high, but making these shifts within the company, it sounds like, I don't know. And we've got Elon Musk who sold a major portion of his Bitcoin. You know, I just want you to be careful here because crypto has definitely been volatile. Also, Ford, we've got Ford that there's a bunch of call options and just because we have unusual call options, doesn't mean that it's a good thing to buy. I mean, I don't like Ford, to be honest, even at this price. And with them increasing the price of their electric vehicle truck that's going to come out, I just don't know if there's going to be that much of a demand for it as they're expecting. Now, Ontario Cannabis Stores halt store deliveries after cyber attack on contractor. From everything I've listened to in the market, it doesn't sound like the systems, processes, SOPs, OSHA, all that stuff is very robust. And this is another example of where there are vulnerabilities within companies, not only cannabis stores, but just in general, cyber is something that's going to be even more and more important as more and more time goes on with AI and everything ramping up. So pay attention to those cyber plays and cyber isn't something I've talked about a lot on this channel, but I did. I know there's some interest. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more about that. Now, this is the one thing that does have me, you know, a little bit concerned because analysts are looking forward. We've got to listen to what these CEOs are saying when they're reporting. And, you know, whether or not you like Zach or not, I believe Zach has given it to us straight. He has told us time and time again that it's a bloodbath, that this market is, it's a challenging market. That There's going to be massive consolidation and there's an oversupply there's a demand supply imbalance in the market in Canada specifically. You know what? I've got an idea. Can we use these grow facilities to grow something useful? Is there a way to diversify? They've got all of these manufacturing facilities that they're either closing down or shutting. I mean, it seems like everything, you've got it in place to be able to grow stuff up there. I mean, can we just change the type of crops? I mean, then you won't get an excise tax on it. You might even get more money from the government. Now, Biden, DOJ, says medical marijuana patients are too dangerous to trust in motion to dismiss lawsuit on guns rights. This got some attention. Let's focus on why this price went down today. Why did it pull back? Not only the chips issue, right? That might be the majority of the reason, not a cyber attack. It's probably not big enough, but we had Kronos Group, right? This is what I want you to pay attention to because analyst expectations... They, that's what they didn't meet. So if you go through here and you check out this article, long story short, they did not meet analyst expectations. All the financials here was an increase. Everything looked good. The losses, I mean, it wasn't as bad, you know, dramatically better. And the revenue wasn't that bad. I mean, reported earnings just missed the analyst estimates. So I really want you to focus on that that it doesn't have to be better year over year, quarter over quarter. Analysts make a prediction, and if you don't hit that prediction, 
it can really have an impact on the stock price. So, so if we take a look at the charts for Kronos, just very quickly, we can see the last two E. E stands for earnings on the chart, and it went up afterwards, right? And this was on a miss. It looks like they missed, but must have reported some decent news. I'm not too familiar with Kronos, but it, it came down here about the middle of June and then ran up in anticipation for a decent earnings. Missed analyst expectations, all right? Analyst expectations, and then came down and uh, looks like it's going to try and find support, but the low period here would be at about 250 so you can see that it's trying to get support right here under three dollars if you wanted to take a look at that i would look I would, I would just wait be patient look at that at that point we've got village farms too uh village farms looks like they had a decent profitable earnings and they fell on earnings that's the second one that fell on earnings found support and then went sideways so it looks like all of these for the most part are falling on earnings after earnings so the catalyst leading up to earnings, now s and is going to be different, right? Because we get the earnings release on Friday. The blackout period isn't officially over until I would say they report on Monday. They have something to say in the pre-market. So I'm going to take a chance here, right? I'm going to say everyone's cost average down at the low end. I mean, if you've been watching this channel, I talked about cost averaging down in this week. This right here is about a 21% rally from the bottom of when this last candlestick touched and then when it started to run up, so about 21%. And if we look at this low period right here on the bottom of this candlestick and then we hit this one right here, that is about 23%. And if we take a look at this last candlestick here, and we just go up about where it rallied here before. That was about 20% too. So we're starting to see these 20% rallies in between each of these periods. And it's, it's pretty much starting to trend back up. And we're starting to see some volatility to pull back off of those uh, points. But, I mean, it makes sense. According to the chart, when you do get above the 70 I like to look and make sure that the chart makes sense. When it does pull back, why does it pull back? I mean, right here, this was just a rebound from that huge sell-off. So I'm not too concerned about trying to analyze this first pullback. I understand that that was right before this sell-off period right here. But when I get up here to this point, I do want to see that this went across the RSI. And that's the reason that it briefly pulled back. Not too much. It still stayed on an uptrend. This is the RSI. This is the trend indicator. So generally speaking about the trend, this is still in an uptrend. Now, what I want to see is that this can be stable support. I don't want to see this go below about the 43 on the RSI. 43, I want to see it find support here at the 43. I don't want it to go down here to 39. I want this to stay up on this uptrend throughout the rest of the week. And CPI could be that catalyst that helps this to maintain an uptrend on the charts. So I always like to look at Tilray because I believe the patterns, the chart patterns between Tilray's charts and Sundial, they almost move the same direction, same way. So check out this. Now this is different. After their earnings, which didn't meet all expectations, but I still believe the call went well because I listened to that earnings call that continued on an uptrend. And I believe that we are starting to see, and you can see previously, I mean, it really looks somewhat similar, not completely because some of these dips, it's not the levels that we're seeing from uh, Sundial, but we are seeing an uptrend after earnings for Tilray. So can we see that new optimism for Sundial and see a turnaround in those charts? Maybe you shouldn't sell your complete position, but I'll leave that up to you. That's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next video.